Hello and welcome back to the Toronto Website Developer.com. I am PG Worski, the Toronto Website Developer specializing in Drupal. In the seventh video tutorial of our 10 part video tutorial series on Drupal 7 module development, I want to go into uh, detail uh, look at the Drupal 7 form API. It's something we probably should have checked out in the previous video tutorial, but it will help us to actually render our results into a table that's uh, functional and user friendly uh, for users, as well it leverages the actual Drupal system itself because it's built in and provided with uh, Drupal core. But before we do that, you'll notice I'm over at torontomobsetdeveloper.com slash store. Here you can purchase my video tutorial series. Uh, I greatly appreciate all the sales. Uh, they go to help me to continue to develop these and keep them free, keep them frequent, um, and throw them up on YouTube. Uh, as well, maybe if you if you can't afford a video tutorial series, but you do want to help out, please leave this, uh, give this video tutorial a thumbs up or leave a comment. Let me know how I'm doing. I appreciate that feedback. And it also helps with YouTube because they track that type of engagement and will promote the video tutorials to other users who are looking for similar things uh, based on uh, types of engagement. As well, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. I love seeing that number grow. And it's another thing that I track to make sure that I'm doing the right thing and really helping out as many people as I can. That said, why don't we get back over to our site? So I'm going to, I'm over at my site here. I'm at admin structure flags flag application. This is something we created in the previous video tutorials. So this is my administration page. And this is what our end result is going to look like. Uh, we've got this nice table with some check boxes that I can actually select these different uh, applications. And then I can choose this uh, approve or deny. And so we, we can do this all out of the box with a few simple lines of code. Uh, it's not hard, but it's all based on Drupal 7's form API. Something I didn't really talk about in the previous video tutorial, but I should have. So if we go back over to api.drupal.org, uh, you'll see down here that there's this in-depth discussion form API reference. And so what Drupal actually provides um, is rather than constantly rewriting all these HTML forms, uh, Drupal has a form API, which if you use a certain structure and provide certain information in a certain way, uh, it will render a whole bunch of, uh, you know, all your different types of form elements uh, out for you with very little code. So what we want to do is we want to use this table select here. And so if you hover over any of these, you'll notice that they're all links uh, to different information because it's a very long page. So they're all anchors. Um, but specifically, if I click on table select, I get a description of what table select is uh, and then how I can actually uh, use it. And so there's an example here and it actually comes from Node Admin Inc. And this is what we've been using and leveraging while we've been doing our module. Uh, so I actually have that code up. We're gonna look at that as well. Um, but here you'll see here a table created with far left column of radios or checkboxes. That's exactly what we want. And so it builds the table headings and columns with the headers property and the options property. And so what we want to do is if you scroll down through this code, you'll see that uh, it's doing exactly what we're doing. It's pulling in all of these NIDs and then it's going to render them in these options. Uh, oops, clicked on the wrong link. Render them into these options and display it all on a table. And so you'll see here it's using the form API form and it's passing in an array. And of course, I keep clicking on the wrong thing. Um, but it's using these different um, uh, element types uh, and passing in certain information. Then Drupal knows to, what to do with that type of information. And so we're going to use table select. Um, and obviously what we need to do is create this headers and this options, uh, pass that into this, um, this function or this array element. And then Drupal will take care of actually creating the, the, the table for us. So why don't we go over to our code and actually get started on that. Not flag application admin inc. And you'll see previously we created this empty string and then we added a whole bunch of stuff to that string, added it back to the form under the markup tag. Uh, so we want to get rid of all of that. And uh, based on the example, what we first need to do is create this, this header um, variable. So I've gone ahead and I've done that just to save us some time. So I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it in here. And I'll just paste it up above just because it's, uh, I think, better suited up here. So I've got this header and what this header does is it's going to have the uh, column names for each one of my columns. And so this corresponds to all the information we're getting out of the database. So you'll see here, my first is my title. Uh, and then the, the value for that is going to be flagged content. The next key is the name. It's going to be the username, entity ID, and so on. So that's my header. That's going to be each one of the columns. Now what I need to do is I need to take all of these rows and um, need to pass those in. And so based on our example here, um, what they did with the node, um, the node module is they took element uh, options, made it an empty array, and then they went through each one of the, the nodes that they had and they added that into um, uh, an array itself. So let's go ahead back to our code and let's do something similar. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create um, a, an array. And so I'm doing that with rows. And 
uh, once I've got that, I need to go through each one of our results. So I'm going to paste in a bunch of code here, and then we're going to walk through it together. So I've got this pasted, and I'm just going to clean this up here. So remember, we, we took all of our results from the database, and we put it into the results uh, variable. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to go through each one of those. Um, and so we do that with a for each statement, and then we're going to go through the results, and then each element is going to be in the variable result. If you're not familiar with this, check out my introduction to PHP um, video tutorial series because I do cover that, and I do cover the switch statement, which we're doing here. You'll see that uh, for the switch statement, what we're doing is just actually providing a uh, value for the status, and it's dependent upon what we got out of the, the database. So then we're doing just what Node did, um, and rather than using options, we're creating rows, and so we create a uh, a new element in the uh, rows array. And so we take all of the different information and we provide it into that specific, um, so this element, right? So this is gonna be zero, then it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five. Um, and you'll see I'm adding the title, the name, the end of the ID, the UID, all of it corresponds to the header, right? It has to be in the same order because it's gonna show up in those columns. The one thing that you haven't seen here is the L function. I'm just gonna take a quick detour back over to Drupal, uh, api.drupal.org. And I'm just going to show you, I can type in L here, and I can search. And what this does is it actually creates a link. So uh, first parameter is going to be the text that you want for your link, uh, then the path, and then uh, you can provide some options as well. The cool thing about this is it'll format it as an internal or external URL. So I can pass an internal path, and it will provide me the, the external URL to that. Uh, so that's kind of a cool thing. I'll show you uh, here just by hovering over. You'll see down at the bottom, rather than node slash one, two, three, it's actually providing content slash Peter's event link test, right? My, my uh, alias path. So that's kind of neat. Uh, it's a nice thing about the L function. So you want to get familiar with that because you'll end up using it quite often. So the text that I'm providing is the actual uh, title of the node. And then the, the internal path to that is node slash and then the, the entity ID, the NID. So I've got the rows, I've got my headers. Now what I need to do is just like um, in the example from api.drupal.org uh, in the forms API, I'm going to add an element to my form. And so this should actually be, we'll come back to this. Um, form, I'm adding a table. So this should be flag applications table. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you name it. Um, I'm just keeping this consistent. So that's why it's flag application. And then the type is going to be table select. Uh, and we got that. Remember, if we go back over here, we go to form API. Type is table select. So that's what we chose there. Uh, the header is going to be the header that we're providing. The options are going to be the rows that we're providing. And then we've got the empty text. And then we're passing in attributes. So um, just going back over to api.drupal.org, uh, again, just so you're familiar with this in the form API, these X's. Uh, identify which uh, of these different um, uh, properties are available for different forms. So if we look at table select, we could use access, we could use after build, Ajax. What we couldn't use would be autocomplete path, collapse, collapsible columns, and so on. So I've only used a handful of these, but you could use a bunch of them. I'm not going to go through each one of them, but what you can do is you can, let's say, what are they talking about if you go to after build? I can click on after build and it just, here's the nice description, array function names, which will be called after the form or element is built. So I can pass in a new function to do something based on that. Uh, and you can go back and you can check out all of these different ones. And so remember we, we chose header here. That's what's available for table select. And header is actually uh, associative array where the keys or the field names to use for each column and the values of the translated text to display for each column header. So that makes sense. That's exactly what we're doing. So, uh, so I won't walk through the other ones, but just so you know, that's how we uh, we did that. What I've done up here, uh, I'm just going to keep this uh, flag application, um, I don't know, status. What I've done here is I've added another small table, um, not table, but an element to the form. And what this is, is rather than table select, this is going to be select buttons, uh, select drop down. And so I'm passing in the title actions and then I'm passing in options. And if we go back over to api.drupal.org, um, I can go and I can click on select here, and you can see format a drop-down menu or scrolling uh, selection box. And so this is exactly what I want. Uh, I want you to have to choose, are you gonna approve or deny? And so that's why I've, I've added that. And you can see in this example here, so 
type, title, options. I'm not providing a default value. And I guess I could describe, uh, provide a description here if I wanted to, um, but it's just a nice simple example. And so that's what I've done right here. Um, last thing what I've done is I've added this pager. And so this is the only thing that's a little bit different. Um, what I've done here is I've added this element um, and I've, I've made it an array and I'm passing in uh, the markup. And so if we go back over here and we look at uh, markup, we'll find it here somewhere. All this does is it uses HTML that will be outputted to the form. And so the reason why I want to do that is because I can use this markup to theme the pager. And so uh, remember up way up here, we did this pager default. So we have this pager. We need to actually print it out and you do that by um, theming the pager. This is a little bit different. Again, this is a Drupal function uh, theme. And if you go to api.drupal.org, you can see the theme is a, is a function. And what it, the first thing that it takes is uh, the actual hook that you're using, then any variables provided to that. So um, when you define a theme function in Drupal, you're going to like theme pager is a function. And so that will do a bunch of different things um, specific to this function. So I can go theme pager and you can actually look at it and we can look at the code. And so here it actually goes through and this is how it actually renders my, my pager. But more specifically, it's an actual function I can call. And you call that in Drupal by calling theme and then passing in uh, the second part of theme function name. So just underscore pager. Um, and so that's what I've done here. That's why I'm passing in the pager as the, as the element there. Uh, last thing what I'm doing is I'm just creating the submit button. Uh, again, type is of submit. So you can check out the api.drupal.org to figure that out understand why I'm doing that. And then the value is just uh, the submit uh, word itself. So I can go ahead and save that, go back over to my, my site here. I'm going to go to the structure flags, flag applications. Let's reload this page to make sure we're actually seeing it. And we are, and you'll see here, I've got my drop down selection list, which is nice. And then I've got my actual table select and I can choose all of these ones uh, and they're all pending and that kind of thing. And I can choose uh, where we'll approve or we'll deny them and then I can submit. Right now, our submit function doesn't do anything. So that will be the next video tutorial when we actually take that handle and we start really uh, completing this form itself. So hopefully this video tutorial helped you. Uh, I know I went through a lot, but the API, uh, forms API for Drupal is going to be hugely helpful for you. Uh, so I encourage you to check it out. We've only scratched the surface. If you have any questions or were confused by anything I covered, uh, please leave a comment, let me know. Uh, I'll happily help you out. Uh, as well, you can always find me at torontowebsitedeveloper.com but please leave a comment. Don't use my uh, contact form to ask me questions because um, when you do that, you are the only one that benefits from the answer as opposed to using comments where everyone can read the question and read the answer in case they have uh, similar problems. As well, if you haven't already, please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment on YouTube, and we'll see you for the next video tutorial. Thanks very much.